dear students i welcome you all on the e learning platform of ktm college dear friends today we are going to discuss the poem called there is a certain slant of light written by emily dickinson which is prescribed for ms second year and the paper is american literature so let's discuss about the poet Emily Dickinson was born on December 10, 1830 in a small town called Amherst the population of which hardly numbered 3000 people situated in the center of a huge semicircle of hills this town was considered a beauty spot in the Connecticut River Valley her father Edward Dickinson was a lawyer a congressman and a trustee and treasurer of Amherst College throughout his life Edward Dickinson was guided by a stern sense of duty never allowing his emotions to interfere with his role as a responsible leader of the town he ruled his house like an absolute monarch rearing his children with a firm conviction that they would become christian citizens she almost completed her education at home except a year she was an active girl with a mischievous bent of humor at mount holyoke she made helen fisk then a uh, hunt jackson who remained a friend and one of miss dickinson's few contemporaries to recognize the universal and lyrical power of her intense poetic genius she probably had few male companions although she enjoyed the company of benjamin newton in the case of charles wordsworth we only know that in her 23rd year she began to exchange letters with him in 1860 he visited her but the next year an assignment san francisco to which he moved with his family from that time on Dickinson began to withdraw into her house but this could merely have been the result of her upbringing and her peculiar personality with this withdrawal into her into the warmth of her emotional innerness came the beginning of her real poetic productivity a large number of her poems combined with the fact of her voluntary seclusion has led to much speculation that she must have had an intense but unsuccessful love affair uh, it has been said that she led an uneventful life miss dickinson's life was perfectly devoid of outward event she did not choose to avail herself to whatever social life was available to her such an attitude gradually made her life one of an almost complete solitude in a letter dated 1853 when she was 23 years old she remarked i do not go from home by the time she was 30 the habit of living an isolated existence had become very strong and the subject on which she has explicit and emphatic in her letters to Higginson. Then secondly, she leads her life a recluse, but by her own choice. It is also agreed that Miss Dickinson become a hermit by deliberate and conscious choice of her own. Higginson writes, a recluse by temperament and habit, literally spending years without setting her foot beyond the doorstep and many more years during which her walks were strictly limited to her father's grounds. She habitually concealed her mind like her, like her person from all but a very few friends and it was with great difficulty that she was persuaded to print during her lifetime three or four poems this voluntary isolation 
was not due to any disappointment in life, nor was she an invalid. She had perhaps tried society and the world and had found them wanting. Then we also come to know that she had a deep interest in living also by the end of the civil war. It is reflected after the civil war. Miss Dickinson had passed through the crisis year of her life, which were also the most productive years of poetry. Much like other New England spinsters, she withdrew from contact with all except the members of her family and a group of her close friends. But unlike other spinsters, she continued to feel an ecstasy in the act of living, as to think life still the finest secret, to keep up her large correspondence and to write 20 poems a year. Miss Dickinson had close friendship with Otis Lord, a good friend to her father or father for many years, 18 years older than she, and happily married. After the death of Lord's wife in 1877, their friendship developed into love, ardent and acknowledged, which would probably have led to her led their mar as marriage had not the just died of a stroke early in 1884. With his death, the spring of Dickinson's life was gone. The discovery of Dickinson's tender feelings for Otis Lord and his for her had rendered her whole life more real, credible, and human. Uh, as far as the poetic mentors of Emily Dickinson are concerned, we have some mentors in her life. She says that he was the first of my own friends about Benjamin Newton who was her father's law, law, students, uh, law student and with whom she was sharing her piercing love for truth in poetry when she was still in her 18th year. Newton was also her first mentor, who gave her a copy of Emerson's poems. Her second mentor was Charles Wadsworth, who preached before her in 1855, met her twice in Amherst, and corresponded with her until his death. As to her third mentor, Higginson, uh, she confessed in 1862. My dying tutor told me that he would like to live till I had been a poet. Along with this, she also considers to be a private poet up to the end. Emily Dickinson remained a private poet, this being unfortunate in her literary advisors and severely limited in her experience of uh, getting her work printed. The choice of remaining a private poet was forced upon her. This was the brief introduction of uh, Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson is the uh, most famous poet from American literature as uh, we had the contributors of American literature like uh, Alan Poe, Emerson, H.D. Thoreau, Fitzgerald, Faulkner, Hemingway, Mark Twain, Henry James, etc., etc. And she also created her own place in American literature. Uh, so, the dear friend, uh, it was a, a brief introduction of uh, Emily Dickinson, and uh, so now it's time uh, to talk about the major themes uh, of her poetry. As far as the major themes of her poetry is are concerned, we have theme of love, we also have theme of nature, then a theme of pain and suffering, then of the death, and uh, 
along with uh, these themes we also have themes like as immortality and spirituality and she has remained as well as uh, remained in the minds of the audiences for her ambiguous dash okay let's see how her major themes are depicted in her poem thank you, thank you.